Hey guys, so now we're starting knee bar defense. Uh, knee bar is an extension based submission similar to the ankle lock, but of course much more similar to the arm bar in which we are looking to hyper extend the knee. So we still need three parts where we have a mobilization of the hip, which is going to be a pin. We have control of the knee with a wedge, and then we're going to have meaningful lever control to be able to actually apply force into the knee. There's two main two sides to the knee bar. One I consider a strong side, one I consider a weaker side, but it's still very good. So if I'm here in this traditional knee bar configuration, what I'm doing is attacking the bottom leg. So Kevin's left hip is on the ground right now, I'm attacking his left leg. The reason why this is considered strong to me is that I'm denying him the ability of having meaningful base and being able to get on top or withdraw his hip. In order to perform a technical stand-up, Kevin needs to plant this leg in the base and withdraw this leg through. Now I can get up. If I have control of this leg and Kevin tries to perform a technical stand-up, he's not going to be able to. It's very hard for him to mobilize his hips and if he can't mobilize his hips, I'm ultimately going to be effective at leg locks. If I attack this side in this kind of configuration, absolutely can be done, still can be very strong, but Kevin is now able to withdraw this leg, and this is what's going to start getting us into a little more problems. So, we're first going to just go over brake mechanics here from the strong side. I am bringing my leg over and through the inside, and I'm going to cross it underneath my other leg to protect it. What I'm looking at doing is creating a pin down at the hips here, so I don't like triangling my legs. I think it also kind of gets jammed up across the floor here. I'm usually just going to be crossing at my calves or at my feet and closing my heels into my partner's hips. And I'm looking at creating that same wedging effect, uh, the incline planes, as we would when I was talking with the standard Ashy video. So instead of just pinching my thighs together and having them completely uh, parallel to each other, I'm looking at cutting them here. So I'm actually gonna have a little bit of an offset rather than having my knees right beside each other. If I pinch like this and Kevin pulls his knee straight back, it goes away. If I lose this knee, I no longer can create a fulcrum right here at the knee. But if I create this, where I'm going to be creating a bit of upward force with my knee here, and with this knee, scraping it up his thigh and then closing my legs together, as Kevin trusts, I'm going to move with him. So that's always the test we want to do with most of these leg lock positions is, can I control with just my legs? So this is going to control his hip and also starts to control his knee because his knee is past my thighs here. So just like an arm bar, if we've lost the elbow, then all we're going to be doing is trying to apply force into our opponent's forearm. Here I need to be applying force right above or basically right at the knee. If his knee dips through my leg and we're here, then all I'm doing is aggressively humping his shin and I'm not actually going to be able to do anything here. So I have the knee line control. Now, talking about lever control, we have three kinds of submissions that I kind of talked about when it comes to the ankle lock. We have extension base, we have rotation base, and we have crush base. Knee bar is traditionally extension based, still is. However, what we want to do is we want to add a rotation based element to it because that's going to further break the structure of our opponent's leg and make them weaker. Kevin's still right now, even though I have control of his leg, if I try and just hyperextend it and he starts curling against me with his hamstrings, Kevin's leg is still very strong. With a knee bar, we are using our entire body to isolate our opponent's leg, and so with that high concentration of force, we're going to be able to usually overpower them. But, especially at these earlier stages, if I'm trying to get this knee bar and he's curling this leg, it's going to be very strong, and I'm going to have a hell of a time trying to get this. But if I can add a little bit of a rotation-based element to his leg, all of a sudden it breaks the structure of his leg and puts him in... Uh, it externally rotates his hip and now he's not going to be as strong. So even by me just doing this, if Kevin tries to curl his leg now, much more difficult. Even if I hold this with one hand and he allows me to have that twist right now, if he tries to stop me from curling it, curl your leg Kevin aggressively, I can do this. Because I'm creating this twist through his knee and it's going to make him much weaker. So, nothing wrong with just getting the knee bar and looking to create that hyperextension by just pulling it straight back. Sometimes we're unable to get the stronger lever control, but what we want to do is stop him from being able to rotate so we stop his ability to escape, but so that we can also increase our offense. What I'm doing is I'm bringing my head over top of Kevin's toes, right here up at the big toe joint, 
So I'm going to be able to stop him from pointing his toes up to the sky, which is going to allow him the ability to start mobilizing his hips. What I'm looking to do is bring my top arm over and grabbing his heel. This arm is wrapping underneath and basically on my bicep or the crook of my elbow is going to be connecting to his ankle here. And so I'm going to form a rear naked choke grip. I don't like doing it the opposite way because it starts to get jammed up against my shoulder on the floor right now. So underneath, wrapping, controlling with the head. So I'm covering it on both sides. Rear naked choke, grab the heel. What this is going to allow me to do is now use my head to point his toes down and pull up at his heel to pull the heel up to the sky. So I have a lever on both sides of his foot that I'm going to be able to use to just compound the rotation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look to take slack out of the joint. So just like we talked about with the ankle lock, instead of me just trying to extend him here like a traditional knee bar, I want to first stretch his leg out. So I'm taking his hip, anchoring it down, and even pushing it away slightly as I grab up here at his ankle, and I extend here. And so think of his knee being connected here where we got the shin, we got the thigh, we're at the knee joint, we're trying to pull it apart, basically like a torture device. We're not looking to create a submission off of that, but by taking loading tension through his tendons and through his muscles, everything becomes tighter already. So here, instead of me being like this, I'm going to start straightening my spine and pushing up at his foot and extending it here. Now there's already tension through his leg. Now, to create further tension and the breaking of structure, I'm going to create a rotation in his leg. And so what I'm just looking at doing here, depending on the tension, I might even be able to rotate more here to the point where he's going to tap. And so he ends up tapping to the rotation based part of the submission. So it actually becomes a heel hook in the same way where I've anchored his knee and now I'm twisting and that twisting force is what's going to be causing the damage uh, to his knee. We don't need to twist that much, but as I got this control, I'm looking at creating this slight twist here, pointing his toes down to the floor and pointing his heel up and I've taken the slack out of the joint. And then from here would be creating that slight, bridge where I'm curling my heels into my opponent's hip further and I'm going to just slightly start to rotate my pelvis forward. So there's going to be a bit of a curling my hips in almost like I'm trying to hump my opponent's leg just so that I'm able to create a proper fulcrum right there at the knee and then I'd actually start looking at creating a bit more extension with my back and starting to actually drive my hips forward. The bridge when it comes to finishing any submission is the most powerful part and the end, the end part of our breaking mechanics. It shouldn't be necessary in the gym. It's also the part that is the end of the, the breaking mechanics that is most likely to hurt our training partner. So in the gym, we always say don't bridge into your leg locks or your arm bars. If you're bridging into an arm bar, you're going to hurt your opponent's or your training partner's elbow. If you bridge into a heel hook, this is where people get afraid to train heel hooks. I should be able to, with relatively little energy, be able to get the proper control, pin of the hip, control the knee, control the lever. I take the slack out of the joint. And so with that, with my extension, I already start to load a little bit of weight or a little bit of force into his knee here because by me straightening my spine, I start to cause the extension of his leg. It's not hyperextended, but it is at least now at the point of being locked out. I create a slight rotation right there. So I take the slack out of the joint. There's actually quite a bit of tension through my body right now. And then I create rotation. Look at that. I'm using 10% of effort to do this. It's safe for Kevin and I'm getting pretty good brake mechanics. And then if I wanted to work on the bridge, I'm going to kind of loosen the stuff up a bit. So I'm able to get a little bit more with the rotation. And then I create a little bit of my bridge here. Bridge is not necessary in the gym, but obviously we want to practice a little bit because that's what we're going to have to do to create the actual force to break or destroy somebody's knee if this is in competition. Weak side, similar thing. We just want to make sure that he can't point his toes back up to the sky because that's what's going to allow him to plant his foot into the, the mat and this is what's going to have, create the risk of him coming up and performing a leg drag against us. So it's the same thing where my head has to come over to his toes and I'm grabbing his heel. So even at an earlier stage, if I'm here, I'm wanting to look at going for the knee bar, and even if my hips are more squared up to him like this, control like this is going to make it so much more difficult that if Kevin tries to drive into me right now, I just look to make sure I keep his toes pointed down. Here, I connect. Now, from here, 
I personally, I think it provides better hip control that instead of just having the ankles crossed like this, I like to point my one foot up and actually start to form a bit of a triangle here. It doesn't have to be right in the crook of the knee, but controlling here, I can now get a better bite on his hip. I'm creating the same rotation, taking the slack out of the joint, and then a slight hip in to cause that bridge for the hyperextension. So here, controlling, getting that rotation. Everything is really with this. I should be able to, with basically that heel hook knee bar, I could get the tap there within the drilling context. So I make sure I've loaded that tension, get the deep grip onto my bicep and tricep, and then I can move my head into it a bit more to cause more rotation, take the slack out of the joint, getting the tap in the knee bar. Thank <laughs> you.